So I think we are live right now. Do you guys see me? Do you guys hear me? Leave some comments if you guys hear me and see me. Is it working? Like some people say they see me. Some people say it's over again. All right, so I'm just going to start this off. So I want to, this is basically a follow up on the question and answer series. Um, somebody had a question on uh, how did I get started? Uh, how I did, uh, how did I got started? How did I evolved from that over the years? Um, and then some history, uh, what am I doing now? So that's basically what I want to talk about in this episode. Um, but, okay, so I also want to let you guys know that I have a special offer again on my website. So if you buy the LBM Blueprint ebook, you will get a free ebook uh, of your choice for free. So when you buy the ebook, send me an email to littlebeastmtraining at gmail.com and I will send you uh, another ebook free. Of your choice let me know what book you want uh, in that email and I will send it to you for free and this offer will last for only two days so make sure you are quick <clears throat> so let's start it off uh, going on how did I get started so Basically, I was like 14, 15 years old. Um, started doing training at home uh, by myself, uh, just doing some push ups, um, some basic uh, core workouts. Um, I did not have a pull up bar or anything yet in my room. Um, yeah, that's basically how I started doing uh, many, many reps and sets push-ups and um, core work but really of course I did not know anything back then about training so also around that time YouTube really got popular um, and I started um, basically searching some exercises for me to do at home and after many I don't know many videos I came across some calisthenics videos and these videos were from um, Zef Zaccavelli who were from Beast Lord Vidal um, I got Bandana Red from Highlanders team uh, <laughs> you I had Doc from Team Wingate, you had of course Hannibal for Kin, uh, you had Calisthenics Kins, uh, who you got more? Yeah, you had many, many uh, training videos from basically the New York area back then. But first off, it was Calisthenics Kins with Zef, Lord Vidal, and um, Bandana Red from Highlanders. And those videos really, really got me inspired in, in starting to train. Uh, the things they could do was really incredible. I never saw 
on people doing muscle ups or one arm pull ups um, doing bent arm planches uh, I never saw that and so that really inspired me to start training in my room um, so back then I started to buy a simple pull up bar for my door I started training uh, on some soccer goals uh, yeah I was just starting out and yeah basically started doing a lot of pull ups, push ups, dips um, of course I wanted to <laughs> do the advanced stuff already so I, I remember the first video I posted was a, a bent arm handstand to L sit back to bent arm handstand wanted to try muscle ups on the bar um, but of course the muscle ups I failed completely <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's basically how I started uh, so I really started uh, training hard I was really inspired and motivated I used to train every day all day I did not know anything about nutrition and recovery I was young and I just traded from the morning uh, to the to the evening. I remember even my father came angry upstairs that I'm still making noise, <laughs> still training. Uh, yeah, those were they were really good days. Uh, so I started training, training, uh, got involved on YouTube, uh, asking. Uh, but then I read uh, Zev. Zakavelli, um, Lord Vital Beast, some questions on YouTube. Uh, I had some contact with Hannibal and Beast, and yeah, just started asking questions uh, what, how they trained. Um, yeah, so um, back then, uh, I believe Zev and Rick Seatman and Jay started making Team Barbarians um, they had amazing videos uh, they was really uh, really on a much higher level and they started making the website uh, after that the forums got got uh, released so I got involved in the forums um, back then everybody uh, just wanted to know more about bodyweight training so many questions were there a lot of information was running around over there and um, yeah so also they uh, so then after the website was released they they made a, a requirement so just that's that you can do the requirements you can join the team um, so I believe the requirement was uh, 40 dips. Uh, it was 40 dips. Uh, I think 20 pull-ups. Oh no, it was it was five muscle ups. Oh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore on the on the order, but I believe it was five muscle ups, 40 dips. 20 pull-ups and 50 push-ups or 40 push-ups and I really trained really really hard for that <laughs> uh, I remember doing like three attempts or four attempts on a day um, you had to complete this in five minutes I believe and I was the first first one who ever completed this from any other country so I was I was the first barbarian uh, from any other country. Um, so that was that was a really good ac accomplishment. I was I believe I was just seventeen, and I completed the barbarian requirements. Mm. So after that, it really it really kicked off. Uh, basically we had challenges on the forums um, 
yeah, I started getting better and better. I I really uh, love to do planks push up and handstand push ups. Um, I used to train uh, definitely like four days with a uh, with friends in the park, uh, really challenging each other. I was already teaching people back then um, how to get started from the bottom to the top. Um, yeah, so I started uh, posting more videos. Um, I saw that people really liked my videos. So I just started posting more and more um, few training clips of my my training um, of course I wanted to I wanted to be the best I compared myself with <laughs> with Lord Vido and Zev even at the age of 17 I wanted to be at that level um, and I think that was a really uh, really great mindset to have uh, even at that age to just compare yourself with the best and trying to reach for that level and yeah, I was just obsessed with it. I was not going to parties or um, hanging out on the street or anything like that. People just knew me that I was training. Uh, I was just purely focused on training and training and training. I used to work and train, work and train, work and train. That's all I did. Mm, those were really, really good days. <laughs> Yeah, make me thinking about this all really puts a smile on my face because those were, were some great times and the calisthenics game was really fresh and new back then and everybody started posting more we got uh, new people coming from all over the world uh, we just had ridiculous ridiculous feats of strength one arm pull-ups 20 muscle-ups <laughs> Uh, front levers, back levers, iron crosses, whatever. Uh, so the inspiration I got every day from from those times were really huge for me, and it pushed me to the uh, pushed me to the next level. Uh, I did not set any limits on myself. I believed anything was possible. Um, of course, I jumped into movements way too fast. But if I be honest, I think I really did well, really good. Um, I believe at the age of 18, 19, something like this, I could do I could do 50 muscle ups, I could do 40 pull ups, I could do uh, planche push ups, handstand push ups. I was very good at doing planches with straight arms. I was doing handstand push-ups with ankle weights, 90 degree push-ups with ankle weights. I was doing rim flies with straight arms, with weighted vest, uh, one arm pull-ups, uh, ridiculous, ridiculous supersets. Um, back then I was known for just uh, high reps, planks push-ups, uh, ridiculous supersets. Um, yes, I and back then I was already starting to uh, be an innovator, started to inspire people. Uh, yeah, even even the uh, people like Zev, uh, Beast, uh, yeah, they really started to give me give me props and. Um, yeah, they started sending me messages and emails on on how I on how I'm uh, performing such a good job. So uh, that really that really gave me more energy to push it even further. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I was just highly motivated and. Really wanted to push the limits. I had no, I had really no limits in my mind. I wanted to get 20 planche push-ups. I wanted to do muscle-ups with 20 kilo. Uh, 
I want to do pull-ups with 100 kilo, dips with 100 kilo. Uh, I want to do full planches, island crosses. I just wanted to have everything. Um, so I was really training well. I was at the strongest point I ever been in my life, and um, yeah, I was really training, training every day, training every day. Um, so one day I was sore. Um, it was just on a birthday, or it was somebody's birthday. Um, so I was sore, and I just wanted to do a, a full planche on the grass, <laughs> um, just like I casually do. I just do full planches and front levers, muscle ups. I could do this any time of the day. Uh, of course I was young and stupid <laughs> so I did a full plunge on the grass really holded it for for four or five seconds and then it went my bicep bicep tendon went crack uh, I was really in shock back then uh, I thought my life ended <laughs> when I tore my bicep um, so of course I just thought it would get better um, the pain was okay after the moment but when the days pass by the pain is getting worse and worse um, yeah so then I just rested for a while uh, maybe one week later I tried to do pull-ups and it was absolutely impossible um, and then uh, it really hit me that I was had a really serious injury. Um, I really did not get uh, any surgery uh, or did any did did get any scan on my bicep, just because I don't want nobody to cut in my in my body. I don't trust anybody <laughs> doing that. Uh, sometimes I regret it. Sometimes sometimes I don't. Right now the bicep is performing good, normally, normal. Uh, it might be like 10-20% weaker than my right arm. But it's all good for me. Um, so I took, I would say, like a half year of completely rest. Um, I think also I needed this mentally. Um, I used to train every day. 24 7 so I just needed a big big break mentally too uh, started resting gained a little bit more weight um, and after a half year I started getting back into training again started to rehab myself uh, uh, I could do maybe three to four pull-ups be just because the pain in the bicep was that major uh, I tried to stretch out the bicep every day so I could do not any I could do not many pull-ups just because of the pain and this continued for like I would say uh, one year more so then I really started to focus on just pushing movements and hand balancing movements and weighted squats and deadlifts I just got really inspired by Ido Porto and uh, more people, more people who are great at hand balancing. Um, I remember watching clips of Steve Atlas, um, Ido Porto and Yuva on hands and more circus artists of course and that just inspired me to get uh, better at my handstand so I really focused on that. And of course, I started to recover my my bicep and my pulling motions over time, slowly, slowly, slowly. It really took me. It really took me like a year to get back at, or I say, let's say, two years from the injury to get back at. I would say fifteen to twenty pull-ups. Um, yeah. 
but after that I really had a mind shift um, so I started doing more more compound movements started doing more lifts like the squat and the deadlifts um, combining combining more mobility in my training um, yes following a little bit of Ido portals uh, how do you say Ido Porto's way of training and his philosophy of training so so it's more uh, complex movements and working the body from all ranges possible um, doing more mobility work so I just wanted to be a more complete athlete not just being good at calisthenics but also be being good at hand balancing being having great mobility having some straight arm strength bent arm strength um, being good at squatting so having a double body weight squat as a goal uh, deadlifting more um, yeah basically uh, I started to swim um, so basically just adding adding more more movements any more different training philosophies into my training in my, into my lifestyle um, yeah so that really shifted my mind um, and the way I trained um, I really started to focus more on the quality of the movement uh, starting to take a few steps back Yeah, and really trying to perfect each movement before moving on to the next one. Um, so this was maybe like, uh, I would say, three, four, four years ago, five years ago, when this mind shift uh, happened. Um, so I started training again normally. I uh, was feeling really good, really well. Um, um, I wanted to get the world record weighted pull-up. Uh, I wanted to just have uh, insane weighted dips. Um, uh, I wanted to be great, good at squatting. Um, I wanted to be great. I wanted to be the handstand push-up. Monster, I wanted to be the best at the handstand push-ups. Um, so I started training for uh, 10, 90 degree push-ups straight. Uh, <laughs> this was really a great moment of my life. It was really, really back to full strength again. Uh, I could do pull-ups with 80 kilo. I could do dips with... 110 kilo uh, <laughs> I could do 10 90 degree push-ups I could do endless hand handstand push-ups I could do squats with 160 kilo deadlifts with 200 kilo um, yeah so I was really I had great mobility uh, but of course injuries happen again so I had an injury on my hamstring with some weighted mobility work I was doing a, a weighted pancake with a 20 kilo plate on my back and, and I strained my left hamstring a bit so I had to take a little bit rest on um, stretching and mobility work so yeah just that's just basically uh, basically That's just basically it, I think. Um, so back then I lived in the Netherlands again. And after that, I moved to Slovakia. Um, also, my my first child was born uh, around about uh, the injury, uh, right after the injury. Um, so I moved back to the to Slovakia and yeah um, uh, 
fuck. And uh, yes, so I just started to train how I normally do. Uh, and then just my shoulder gave out and I built, built some impingement in the shoulder. Uh, so I wasn't the strongest I ever been, I think, in my life. And then the shoulder impingement happened. This was about more than a year ago. Yes, yeah, so this really affected my training. I still started to train, trying to push through the pain. But you guys maybe saw it on my performance in the video. It was not as good as it used to be. Um, so I started to do doing more lower body work, more heavy squats. Uh, started to uh, started to incorporate some strongman work. Um, some hiking in the mountains, uh, getting involved more in meditation and yoga work. Uh, yes, yeah, so I started to keep training and keep training, trying to uh, wish that the pain is going away, but it just, there was no way that the pain is, was going away in my shoulder. Um, so Again, I had to completely get back uh, to rehabbing myself, uh, just taking it easy. Um, so I really started to take a big break on upper body work completely, uh, trying to build more mobility in my shoulders, in my back, um, trying to find out what the, what the cause is, what the problems is, what, I, what problems I have in my body. Trying to find the weak links, working on that. Um, I could not, I could not even do a push up without pain. <laughs> um, so I really had to just really rehab myself with light movements, a lot of mobility work, a lot of panning, a lot of um, just a lot of movement with the shoulder, moving it from all ranges. Um, so I started to focus more on, on squatting and deadlifting. And I was doing really, really great on my back squats. I remember, uh, I believe the last good workout I did was 150 kilo squats on one breath for five reps and for five sets. So you take one breath, hold it all the way through the five reps with 150 kilo and doing that for five sets. And I was, I was just getting ready to build up to a maximum, to a maximum, uh, maximum one rep. Um, but again, shit happened and I injured my back. I unwrecked the barbell, uh, walked back, and it went like. <laughs> I really did. I really don't know why the fuck this happened, um, but I'm doing more gardening work. I am. Uh, I'm having a vegetable garden, so of course you have to work in the garden, uh, being in this awkward position all the time, and this probably caused some tightness in the oblique area, the lap area, and the hips and the low, lower lower back. And I was feeling uh, some, some, some pain in the lower back area, but of course I'm a little bit crazy. I want to push myself every, every, every single training. Um, and I just continue to squat and I believe on the last set, of 170 kilo for four to three reps. Um, I just unracked, uh, unracked the weight and my back went <coughs> and I had huge, huge pain, a big adrenaline rush from the pain and I could not sleep normal for, for I would say three to four days. 
but of course I started moving my back um, doing some spinal rotations opening up the hips and after a week or so I could move move normally again um, started to rehab again my squat uh, <laughs> when I wanted to put some weight on my back after after two weeks of not doing any heavy squats and my back just felt really really fragile it just felt like 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 a little girl's little girl's back uh, it felt really weak so then I really knew I had to completely uh, build mobility again build strength in the spine in the back and slowly 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 build up to weighted squats again um, actually uh, I'm still rehabbing uh, the, the, the squats but it's feeling much better and this is about in half year time um, of course I'm seeing some physio and I'm having some massage for my shoulder and for my back and from some for some other areas in my body because my body is completely fucked up from all the training I've done over the years <laughs> um, so I I'm training now already for 10 years total, all right? So you should know how how my body is. It's not healthy, of course, to do all this extreme work for your body. So this really make me uh, um, change my approach to training. Um, not having this crazy mindset every time every single training to just push it to the limits uh, yeah just taking more care of my body right now um, listening to my body more um, and yeah so here we are today as you guys know I'm still dealing with my shoulder injury and my back injury but my shoulders are getting much better it's really getting much better <laughs> uh, I'm happy from it the rehab work is paying off, just having patience, uh, just having, just pulling that few steps back is really, is really what you have to do when you are dealing with an injury. You have to find what the problem is, what the, what the causes of the injury, um, build back, build back health and mobility uh, and strength in the weaker areas in your body and you can fix your body yourself. Um, just do some research, have some knowledge, and apply it, and and just uh, try to make your lifestyle uh, around this around this rehab journey. It's really hard. Of course, you get depressed many times. Um, you think back on the on the on the great days, of course. But it's I think it's all part of part of life you know you have ups and downs ups and downs with everything in life um, that's just the law of the universe um, so make sure when you are really up just to have some just to have some more patience and more care for yourself and just take it a little bit more easy because I'm sure some something will happen that will make you push down that make you fall down again but because that's just the that's just the law that's just the the way of life um, so make sure when you are really really doing great and when you have really high performance just to tell yourself all right right now i'm really doing great i'm breaking records but now it's just time to give my body a break, give my mind a break, otherwise you will fall into pieces. And it's really true. <laughs> From all the injuries uh, I have got, um, this was all the, all the injuries happened at the highest, highest uh, or the best shape I've ever been in my life. So <laughs> make sure 
just to control your ego and and have some uh, yeah just have some patience for yourself just give your body a break we have uh, we have so much years we have so we have such a big lifetime um, we don't have to do everything um, today just take your time all right So here we are today, and um, I actually starting to get back in Olympic lifting, and I'm really motivated in, mo in Olympic lifting right now. It's just so 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 technical and so hard to learn this. So I want to have some different movements for my body. Just because, for I want to do this the rest for the rest of my life. I want to train for the rest of my life, so I have to do something different, just to increase the longevity. Um, of course, when you're doing the same movements over and over and again, you just get wear and tear, and you'll get injured. Um, of course, it 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 will really get boring. So this is why I started to doing. Olympic lifts, so I'm learning to snatch and I'm learning to clean and jerk. Um, I'm learning this by myself. Um, um, so I'm doing a lot of technique work. I'm doing everyday work with a broomstick. Um, yeah, and really starting to put the, the puzzles together. Um, so my main goal right now is Olympic lifting, but of course I'm still doing handstand push-ups and weighted calisthenics and ring training, um, but just more for the secondary work. Um, I'm doing a lot of mobility work. Um, yeah, so that's basically my history my evolution and where we are right now so if you guys have some more questions i would like to answer them now or otherwise i will close this stream and i will see you see you guys later in the next next stream but if you guys have some questions let me know right now i don't think alan troll is good um, don't have any good videos on olympic lifts um, I'm, st I'm, I'm i'm learning from the people who have actually won some olympic medals <laughs> and who have actually some experience in in doing this doing olympic lifts for a whole lifetime and who are actually teaching this to others and I just want to learn from professionals, not from somebody who just do this for for YouTube views or who just pick up some fins from you know from these guys and try and trying to make some tutorial about how to lift. So I'm just really focused on learning it from the professionals and learning from the old school methods, like the Russian methods and yeah. My current, my current, uh, one rep max in the weighted dips right now, or my best ever. So right now, I really don't know. I'm not doing any weighted dips yet, just for my shoulder. Um, but the best dip I ever done was 110 for three reps and two sets. I did not do a one rep max. I was starting to build up for that, but I just took a break from weighted dips. <coughs> 
So I, my best ever was 110 for three reps in two sets, but I believe I could really, at that time, I could really eat a, hit a 130 kilo dip easy. I just mentioned uh, my inspirations for calisthenics in the beginning of the video. So just scroll back to the beginning of the video and I list my inspirations there. So if you guys have any questions, let me know, know, know right now. Otherwise, I'm going to end this stream. How did I train straight bar handstand push-ups? <laughs> uh, that's just basically trying and trying, but um, so I was trying to trying it on the straight straight round bar, and and this was really hard to find balance. So I made uh, some little station where I had a, where I had a wooden bar. Uh, that was a little bit thicker and not round uh, so it was a flat but still st a straight bar and i learned my straight bar handstand push-ups on that first and once i once i once i really gained like five reps i started to try to try to perform straight bar handstand push-ups on the round bar and yeah that's how i learned it Planning on joining Czech weighted battle in Ostrava this October. I'm not sure if I will be attending any competition just because I'm dealing with some injuries and I'm not I'm not performing really well. But I probably will be there just because I see it's in Adam Rao's town in Adam Rao city. So I probably will be there just to see some guys and maybe judge, I'm not sure. Would you su suggest to train handstand balancing every day? Uh, yes, for sure, especially if you want to learn it. Um, with my clients and with my online, online coaching clients, we are doing some people are doing two hand balancing sessions a day and they are they are in one month they have a solid handstand so the more you can do it um, the more quality time you can do it um, the better so do it as often as possible but make sure it's quality uh, quality work all right make sure you can do maybe 10 to 1 hour in the morning and I mean 30 to 1 hour 30 minutes to 1 hour in the morning and 30 minutes to 1 hour in the evening and that's how I did it too just doing 30 minutes of 10 handstand holds and two times a day and this really got me much much better at hand balancing really fast just because it's really a it's a really a skill it, do, it does not put a lot of strain on the body and you can do it really as as often as you want um, so do it as much as possible I'm subscribed to fitness FAQs <laughs> that's probably the, the best channel um, on bodyweight training and calisthenics don't follow any other shit I see I see a lot of new new guys <laughs> and a lot of bullshit on calisthenics and how to train for bodyweight but if you really want to gain some knowledge and if you want a trustworthy YouTube channel then fitness FAQs is the best. Me and Daniel go way back. 
we made of, of also an ebook together. And every video he posts, I completely agree and it's solid knowledge. It's knowledge you can use. Do I, do, you do I think I have good genetics for strength training? I don't know. How the fuck I know? I don't know. I just I just really like to, to work hard. Um, I never think about my genetics or anything. Um, I believe you just have to change your mind. You know, just have no limit. And just push yourself. Just push yourself to the to the to the impossible. There's no fucking limits or of course genetics matters, but hard work, really hard work and dedication is, is what will get you where you want to be. How much extra weight did you use on your handstand push-ups when you got your personal record of 10 90 degree push-ups? Is handstand push-up strength transferable to 90 degree push-up strength? What other exercises will help? So I used, I think I used 30 kilo Handstand push-ups with a weighted vest um, for five reps. I was doing it pretty easy and pretty regularly. Uh, of course, handstand push-up strength will transfer to 90 degree push-up strength, of course. But if you want to get better at the 90 degree push-up you really have to start um, start working on your your bent arm planche and you have to work in that range of motion and that's mostly where people have the biggest weakness in the 90 degree push-up is the, the bottom position in the bent arm planche so you have to do a lot of hollow body work it's just to strengthen the core and the lower back and a lot of um, reverse leg extensions will really help. Um, doing uh, handstand wall presses will really help strengthen your core and your lower back. And a lot of uh, planche push-ups, a lot of weighted dips, um, a lot of dip variations. So you have to build strength in the big far lean forward and in that bottom range of motion so uh, Korean dips on the rings will really help strengthen that bottom range um, you have to do bent arm planche holds in the bottom build up to 30 seconds for sets um, doing weighted handstand push-ups doing very deep handstand push-up will, will really help and of course, military press will help, and one arm dumbbell presses will help. And yeah, that's basically it. That's how you get stronger at the 90 degree push up. If you can do, let's say, five, five handstand push ups for five sets, then I believe you have the strength. To do a 90 degree push up, but make sure you are training uh, all the exercises that I've mentioned, and you will be able to do it easily. Will typewriter pull ups help with one arm chin up? Well, it's it's the first progression in one arm chin up training. So it's also called ar archer, archer chin-ups, archer pull-ups. Of course, it will help in increasing one-arm chin-up strength, but remember, this is the first progression for one-arm chin-ups. So build strength in that and then move on to the next progressions. 
Can I build healthy and strong shoulders without handstand push-ups and overhead, overhead press? No. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can build healthy, stronger, healthy shoulders, but strong shoulders in my eyes, no. You have to, you have to, you have to press overhead press your body weight, and you have to do handstand push-ups and even 90 degree push-ups to get a thumbs up for me, from me for your shoulder strength. No, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, dobre. Yeah, in half hour. In half hour. Yes. So I, I have like 10 minutes left. So if you guys have some questions, let me know. <clears throat> Which exercises would you recommend to start with? Oh. Mm. <laughs> so you have to start from the base. So I suggest to start with uh, pull up variation, overhead press variation, uh, push in motion, uh, straight arm push in motion, straight arm pulling movement, hand in work, core work, oblique work, lower back work, uh, squatting work. Low body mobility work, especially uh, the hips and bridge work. Uh, from that, and from that you can start building up more and more. But start with that base, and you will you will see huge, huge progression. Just don't forget your mobility work, especially the hips. Of course, also hamstrings, but for more most people, hips and spine work really, really important right now. So what is my next goal? Uh, my next goal right now is to learn the snatch and the clean and jerk. Uh, I don't have a weight that I want to reach yet. I just want to really get uh, the scale down of, of snatching and clean and jerk. And my main goal is just to get back healthy make sure my shoulder is pain free and strong and that my lower back uh, can handle some heavy weight again. Is doing low reps and high reps in the same session okay? Of course it's okay, it's very good. Starting with low reps first and finishing off with high reps is what I recommend and I almost always do that. <clears throat> freestyle versus reps and sets you really asking me this question <laughs> reps and sets all day this is how you this is how you build this is how you get stronger this is how you this is how you start to learn to freestyle Freestyle is for, for, for one day a week, for a Sunday. Well, okay, the rest, the rest of the days you must train, you must get better. Freestyle is not getting, getting you anywhere, all right?
Do you know Juji Mufu? If so, what do you think about him? Why you guys want to want to know what I think about another man? Um, I think he's fucking awesome. He has great mobility. He has great strength from many, many, uh, many movements. He can do many movements. He can do backflips. He can do acrobatics. He can he can do lifting. He's incredible. Okay, okay, guys. Some some serious question right now. Otherwise, I will end it. Carlo, my brother, I will never forget you, man. You inspired me. You know it. And we will still meet one day. So if you guys have some questions, come on, let me know right now. I got five minutes more, then I have to go. <clears throat> how, long did, how long did it take you to learn the handstand? Alright, so if we're talking about a bad form arts handstand, I could do that in maybe two weeks. And if we're talking about a straight, perfect handstand, of course it will really take time. But I would say around a half year of seriously training for a straight uh, handstand. Yeah, 60 seconds, about a half year. If I'm kidding about the free ebook, no. So, again, there's just a special offer again on my website. If you buy the LBM Blueprint, you will get a free ebook of your choice for free. So, buy the ebook, then send me, uh, send me an email to littlebeastandtraining at gmail.com with what ebook you want to have for free, and I will send it for free to you. And this offer lasts for two days. Yes, I meditate. But I should do it more. What's a good method to keep consistent at training? It's all just about mindset and what goals you have. Um, make sure you are having fun while you're training. Uh, have some have some heart for it. Have some soul for training. Otherwise, just don't waste your time on training. If you really want to achieve something, you will have that, that you will have the consistency and the dedication for it. And that's as simple as it gets. Some people are just not made for for training or reaching a movement. Anybody, anybody of course can can do it. Anybody can do anything they want, but they must have some heart for it, some soul. Should I do direct work on triceps and biceps or do I get enough stress on them from pull-ups and dips? No, you should definitely do some accessory work for triceps and biceps. Um, just because some, some areas of the biceps and triceps are not getting enough stimulus with just, with just pull-ups and dips. Um, so I would suggest doing some bicep curls from other angles you are not using in the pull-ups and doing some tricep work like like body weight tricep extensions uh, yeah so just working 
some tricep and bicep work from other from other from other ranges of motion so that's very important if you want to get if you want to keep your uh, your bicep and triceps healthy and strong vapo daily no brother <laughs> You must respect the herb, not abuse it. You know this. Don't get too deep in it, my friend. Use it wisely. <laughs> what do you think about one on rose on the rim? Is it a good supplementary for one on chin up training? I think that movement is completely bullshit. Don't waste your time with it. There are much, much more great movements in rowing and supplementary work for one on chin ups. This is the kind of shit that you will see on the TRX. You know, I'm just making an example, but it's just a waste of time. Nothing. What do you think about doing only bent arm training, weighted dips, deadlifts, bench press, pull up at ATC to achieve some skill work like straddle planks, front lever? Well, you will never achieve a front lever and a straddle planche by just doing weighted dips and deadlifts and bench presses. Bench press. You have to. <laughs> you have to let your body adapt to these. Uh, insane ranges and insane positions. You need to get stronger in that position. Uh, it's a completely, completely different position uh, for your body. So you have to, you have to do the skills for sure. You have to do the work. You have to slowly progress to more advanced progressions in order to achieve straddle planches, back levers and front levers. You have to build the mobility, you have to build the weaker links. You don't do this with compound movements. Compound movements are there to build general strength. Of course they will help to get uh, those skills faster, but um, you cannot achieve this just by doing, a uh, just by doing compound movements. Do I train abs the same as every other muscle groups? What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> Always add in core work after your after your after your uh, after your main work. Always at least hit the obliques two two times a day, uh, two times a week. Do some hand and leg raises work, do some plank variations like uh, ab wheel rollouts or rin rollouts, uh, hollow body work, wall presses, dragon flags, whatever. You have to really hit core hard every, every training week. I know it's hard to add in. Start with a progression you can, you can do after your workout and slowly build up with that. So any more questions? So last question right now, come on. Some good question. <laughs> come on. Do you ever feel wrist pain after handstand training? Uh, no. My wrists are well prepared. You have to prepare your joints. You have to prepare um, the joint you are using in the handstand and you will never get an injury. Always make your wrist stronger with exercises. How much water do, do I drink daily? A lot. Um, in Slovakia, there are natural, uh, natural springs where I take my mineral water. Um, so I'm getting real water, um, 
but it just depends but I would say I would I drink about six to eight liters of mineral water a day all right some last questions and I'm going to finish it I love you too brother I hope your training phase is going really well and stay strong brother keep your mind there never forget your heart you know what to do uh, that's a good question how I, how I managed to not be in a slave to the system and keep doing what you love doing I think that's a question for the next video, all right? But that's a good question. But I'm not a fucking slave. I will never be. Never be. In life you have ups and downs, but I will never be a slave. Knowing what I know now, would you have done anything different at the beginning? Of course, of course. But that's just life. You learn from your experience. And without this experience, I would not have this knowledge I have now. So, of course, I have regrets, but there's no way back. So I'm not going to let my mind get stuck in... Oh, well, what I what I could have done better, blah blah blah. I'm just going to move forward and use that knowledge now. Okay, guys. So I'm I definitely do another another live stream this week. Um, I will plan it on YouTube. I think it's really great to have some direct answers to your questions, and I like to do it. So thank you thank you guys for all your support right uh, I appreciate it all um, I still will be training always I still trying to push my limits even if it's in another in another um, sport but I will never forget my base I will never forget where I, where I come from and I will still be very good at it but I just give me some time So thanks for watching. Like I said, the special offer is is for two days on my website. So when you buy the LBM Blueprint, um, you will get a free ebook of your choice for free. So buy the LBM Blueprint, send an email to leaderbeastandtraining at gmail.com and send me send me with the email what ebook you want and I will send both ebooks to you. Alright? So, peace out, take it easy, don't think about what you have could, could done better, just keep moving forward, don't let your mind drift away, keep struggling, do what you love, alright, peace.